We're here to talk about backup and recovery, as well as some techniques for protecting your customers' data, and some ideas on how to sell it to your customers. Businesses today, no matter on their size, whether it's one employee or a thousand, depend ever more on increasing IT needs, IT resources, uh, just to do their job and to be profitable and functional. In order to do backups, it's the lifeblood of a company's business. They don't have a decent backup. They're not going to be able to recover in the event they have a failure. Many businesses go out of business when they don't have a backup that they can recover from. And then there's multiple different threats. It could be fires, floods, uh, cyber issues. Uh, cybersecurity is becoming more and more of a threat to businesses, making sure that they do have a good fallback plan or that businesses do have the ability to recover in case of these disasters is very, very, very important. Um, Larry does this day in and day out as a, as a managed service provider. Um, Larry, is there a DR plan or a business continuity plan that you, you kind of use or you walk a client through? How does, that, how does that work? So when we go into a client or a prospect when we first start out, we'll ask them if they have a disaster recovery plan or a business continuity plan. Chances are they don't. So we'll sit down with them when they become clients, and we'll work on a plan to make them actually identify everything that goes on in their business. It's very important for us to understand how their business operates in order to put together a plan for them. How, for how long can they afford to be down for? How long can they operate in a remote site in the event that their building is unavailable? Uh, when creating a business continuity and a disaster recovery plan, there's really two terms that you can use when you talk to your client, and it's RPO, or Recovery Point Objective, and RTO, recovery time objective. Recovery point objective is the amount of data that a client can lose without doing any serious risk to their business. Maybe they can lose an hour, maybe they can lose four hours, maybe they can lose a day of data, and they'll still be okay after the, the disaster event. The other um, term, RTO, or recovery time objective, is the amount of time that it takes to recover from that disaster or that event. Example being, the server crashes, it takes four hours to get back up and running from a day ago. And that's a great way to look at RPO and RTO combined. Larry, is this something that you use when you talk to clients as far as uh, articulating the value of your service? Absolutely. We recently encountered a situation uh, with a client who's a CPA uh, during tax season. Uh, the server crashed. Both hard drives failed. And we were able to recover their data and bring them up and running in a virtualized environment in two hours. And that included Whoa. sending my engineer there 30 miles. Uh, so he was thankful to us. Uh, we then recovered, we brought them back up to the production after we replaced the drives in their server, so a couple of days later. But all the while, not only were they up in production in a virtualized environment, we were still taking backups of their new data. So they didn't lose any data for that time, they had 20 people in the office. That's awesome. So imagine, it was really great. I mean, he was very happy, and he was more than happy to pay my bill. Yeah, and what a great success story you get to That's now right. use with other clients. That's right, right. But there are some other clients that can't afford to wait. So a small uh, business doesn't need to... His data isn't as critical, so he can afford to wait a few days if, we ha if he has to. It's all a matter of what the tolerance is, you know, for being back up in business. Understood. And as we did research uh, for, for this video, there's a few best practices that we've come up with, um, which we'll discuss now, um, that you as a managed service provider can use to go to market. Um, one of them is to remember you're not just selling backup, as we've hopefully spoken about over the last few minutes. You're really selling a strategic service. It's a service to make sure that the businesses that you are protecting and working with can recover in case a disaster strikes, whether it be a simple user error, they accidentally deleted a file, or there's an actual server crash, or God forbid, and it's happened uh, with some of the clients uh, of Intronus, that where the building is burned down. We need to make sure that they can actually recover. The other best practice that we've come across is compliance. Um, most uh, MSPs work in some type of a regulated uh, industry with the clients, whether it be financial or healthcare, manufacturing. Um, they all have different compliance, whether it be for credit cards or, or, or any type of HIPAA type regulation. Um, it's a great way for you to show, hey, you, you have to do this because you need to do this to be compliant. And we've seen that as a best practice, and some MSPs have been very successful uh, leading with this compliance type specialization. Um, the other best practice that we come across is to make sure that you're bundling. Um, to basically be able to offer managed services without backup, how can you say as an MSP you're protecting the network, managing all the devices, but you're not protecting the data? It, it's almost uh, like you're doing one thing without the other. It doesn't, re it doesn't really work. Um, and, and then the other thing that we've come across is it, making sure that it, it's mandatory, which kind of ties very closely to the bundling aspect, um, because why would you want to support a client that doesn't believe in protecting their data? Um, Larry, when we were talking, you used one of these. I think it's the 
the bundling approach has right. worked very, very well for you in kind of where your region of the country. Right. We won't take on a client unless we have the whole package. Uh, we provide managed services for their computers and their servers, and then we also sell them backup. And if they tell us they don't want the backup, we tell them we can't take them on as a client. There's probably a few common objections, though, that you get from businesses of all size when you're starting to pitch a disaster recovery plan or a backup plan or a strategy, right? And probably the most common one that would come to mind for me first would, Larry, it's too expensive. Yeah. How, do you, how do you handle that objection, it's too expensive? So I knew that was going to be the first one because that's typically what we hear. Uh, we tell a business owner, uh, you, can't really, you can't afford not to have backup your data. Uh, the data is very important to your business. It's critical. If you lose your data, you, can't, you may as well close your doors. You won't be able to continue operating. Uh, so we tell them, how much does it cost you to operate your business on a day? If you have 20 people sitting in the office, what are you going to tell them when you don't have the data? Are you going to send them home? Are you going to have them just twiddle their thumbs? Are you going to find other work for them to do? You have to protect your data. You don't think about it, but the data is your lifeblood of your business. No, that's very true, and I'm sure... Businesses, you know, understand too. There's different size solutions for for different businesses too. So it's not one size fits all, and that's really where you, again you come in. You can size the appropriate solution for the right size business and their in their needs. Um, another objection which I know comes up is, I'm doing it myself. I don't need your help. Yeah, so that's that's another big one, and we get that a lot with a lot of small firms. Uh, they do it themselves. So we'll typically go to an attorney, and say, you know, your billing rate is considerably higher than mine. Out on Long Island, the building rates are five and six hundred dollars and up an hour. We're in the wrong business. Definitely in the, yeah, wrong business. in the wrong business. So I would love to be able to charge that, but I can't. So we could do it for a lot less, and then you could take that time and manage your clients and bill your clients at your hourly rate. And I also tell them in the same way that I don't do my that I don't do my own taxes. Uh, you shouldn't be tech doing your own backups. You don't really know how to do them. You don't know what to look for. Are you? Do you actually when you do the backup, do you do a restore? How do you know? How do you know the backup worked? So that's no, that's, a, that's a really good point. No, I like that, that accounting <clears throat> slash tax example. It's very cool. Um, the other one um, that we probably get is, I haven't had an issue, so why should I start backing up now? Yeah, and we just experienced that. We, have, we just took on a client in January that said, I've never had any problems before. Why am I having all these problems now? And I said, well, first of all, your computer's are 10 years old. You're running Windows XP. Uh, and now they, one of the women had a problem getting a billing folder for all the clients. All the files were encrypted. So we said, but we went to the previous provider, said, well, do you have a backup? And he said, yeah, but it's only 60 days old. Well, the problem with that is we took them on in January. Uh, they lost the file. The files got encrypted in October, and uh, we couldn't rec recover those data. It was totally encrypted. Well, our backups, so we keep them for a year. So the woman was probably afraid to tell her boss that her files were encrypted because she figured he would probably yell at her. So right, right. she just kept her mouth shut. And now they have no data. So ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is not bliss <laughs> at all. The, the, the last, uh, you know, objection that I would get, and obviously we get it because of what Intronus does, you know, we're a cloud backup vendor. Uh, we protect data in the cloud is the cloud's not secure. Or putting my data off site's not secure. The, the most, the safest place for my backup data, my primary data, is in my office. How do you handle that type of an objection? So we actually encourage clients to keep data on site as well. You have to have an off site backup in the event that the building has a fire, a flood, or, or the building blows up. But we do encourage them to have it on-site because they can recover sure. from an on-site backup much faster than if it's in the cloud, uh, whether they virtualize on-site uh, or they just want to recover individual files. It's much faster to do it locally than if they have to do it from an off-site. So, so you recommend they have both, kind of Absolutely. that on-site and that off-site protection. We believe data in three places, on the server, on the local backup, and in the cloud. Oh, that's a great tip, three different locations. I like that. I like that. Well, we hope that these objections, uh, handling these objections and these tips are very helpful. Um, I'm Neil Bradbury. I'm Larry Schweitzer. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you.